Hello guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we're actually going to be looking at a Medium article from a person called Jonathan Sompolinski. Now if you don't know who this is, he's actually the founder of Casper Coin. And he's done a lot of work for the Hashtag and Dagnite and I believe Ghostag protocols. So he's published basically all of them alongside Michael Sutton and a bunch of other people who have helped with Casper Coin. And today he just produced a Medium article on updates for Casper Coin, including topics of CapEx heavy mining, ASICs, and OPOW. So we're gonna go over to this Medium article and go through it, and I'm gonna explain some of what it means, and then we're gonna see what this means for Casper in the future. So here we have this Medium article, and the title of it is Casper Where To, Part IV, which is the last part, and it's made by Jonathan Sompolinski. So this just shows a image of the mining hash rates for different pools, so as you can see, the last 994 blocks, if we look in the top corner there, it shows what pools and what percentages of those have been mined by each pool. So right here it says casper.org is the highest percentage with an unknown percentage of 52.9% of all the blocks. So here he says, Casper is gaining traction on more eyes on us, different edges, intentions, interests. These interests may be at odds, but we are very early in our growth path, still categorically a positive sum game. In particular, future arrival of ASICs will be an overall positive for Caspers, GPU miners included, similarly to GPU miners' arrival being a big win for CPU miners which, which they outmined. So he's talking about the actual ASICs coming onto the network, as we've seen Ice River and the Superscaler coming on. We've also seen some other companies look at buying ASICs or making ASICs for Casper. So he's saying that the arrival of ASICs will be an overall positive for Caspers. Then he further goes on to say decentralization has more to do with the openness, permissionless and level field nature of the market rather than the degree of heterogeneity in the outcome. Fewer entities dominating mining is not an in and of itself a sign of centralization. So normally people say that ASICs are a sign of centralization because you have big ASIC mining farms which tend to centralize how much hash rate there is in a certain place. As long as they are unable to impose non-linear rich get richer effects, for an example, the latter in the longest chain consensus. So he just talks about a theorem here. We are all romantically biased towards a visually egalitarian hash rate distribution pie chart in context to wrongly expect fair systems to demonstrate equal outcomes. And admittedly, capital itself is a barrier to entry and brings about some non-linearity to the game. However, this is a price of victory paid by each and every ecosystem when passing the tipping point. So capital itself is a barrier to entry. He's talking about firstly CPUs would be able to mine on the network and then it would eventually transition to GPUs. So you get a bit more capital that you need to spend and then it would be FPGAs which would be slightly more expensive and then it would move over to ASIC miners which is slightly, slightly more expensive. You know, we've seen the KS0, KS1, KS2. I believe the KS2 two was $30,000 and the KS1 was $15,000. So obviously there is a high barrier to entry in terms of capital for ASIC miners. Moreover, Casper uniquely creates CapEx heavy mining to fulfill its vision. So this is capital expenditure heavy and will be explained shortly. And Casper shifts into heavy mining. We will welcome its maturity phase with great satisfaction, albeit a tinge of sadness. So they're just talking about the actual move from GPU slash FPGAs onto ASICs on the network, as that's capital expenditure heavy because you have to spend a lot of money on these machines. So on Casper and CapEx. Casper perfects the consensus layer primarily in terms of speed of confirmation. Secondarily, throughput capacity, decentralization, down the pipeline, MEV resistance. That's minor extracted value resistance. Speed of confirmations is contingent on the mining market being illiquid, since in the liquid mining environments, 51% attacks are theoretically and in low market caps practically feasible. So the lower the market cap, the less hash rate is going to be on a coin, more likely. So then they can be feasible to have a 51% attack on small market cap cryptocurrencies. This can be fended away by waiting times or by num of confirmations. So the confirmation times is what we can have a parameterlessness on when the Dagnite comes into Casper coin. It's very hard to explain if I just say it in one sentence. So there's a video on my channel about the whole Dagnite consensus and how that actually defends against 51% attacks. So you can check that out on the channel. Typically liquid versus illiquid is characterized by GPU versus ASIC. 
More inherently, it's OPEX versus CAPEX. So the more CAPEX will dominate mining costs, the less feasible it is for an attacker to rent temporarily hash rate via NiceHash. Currently, about 5.3% of Casper network is nice hashable, so we are seemingly still in a safe, illiquid territory. So what they're saying is that NiceHash is basically a renting company, so you rent out hash rate. If you had a certain amount of hash rate, you could actually rent out, I don't know, 51% of the network on a very small cap coin. Say if they were using, you know, an algorithm like Ravencoin, so the Carpow algorithm, you could have a very small coin, you could rent a load of hash rate, and you could put it on a pool and basically you could then control the network with a 51% attack, depending on how big the network is. So they're saying that because ASIC's coming on the network, it would further mean more machines and that means that there'd be a higher barrier to entry to perform a 51% attack because you'd need to have more hash rate and you'd need to spend more money to buy more hash rate. CapEx heavy mining is also more efficient, aka energy efficient, so we all know that ASICs are way more efficient and as a smaller fraction of the security budget is burnt with every new block. This efficiency is important for both the deflationary of Casper, but mainly for addressing the wastefulness of mining heads-on, which is imperative if we are to aim at mass adoption. Notwithstanding the good arguments defending the energy consumption dynamics of proof-of-work in its current form, proof-of-work is politically infeasible and adoption considerations should supersede fundamentalism. All in all, CapEx heavy mining is essential for virtually instantaneous confirmation times in permissionless consensus, thus for Casper to fulfill Satoshi's P2P electronic cash vision. Note, indeed POS is pure CapEx, so proof of stake is pure Cap expenditure because basically you have to buy the coins to stake them, but the security considerations are at the limit itself are non-continuous. A system with Epsilon OpX behaves materially differently and one with zero OPEX, as the latter requires internal, state-dependent, Sybil protection, whereas the former hinges on external sources to distribute voting power. So they're just talking about how proof-of-stake systems work. Now, one big thing that he is mentioning in this article as well is optical POW. Now, we haven't really heard much about this, but it's a new idea for proof-of-work, which would actually be very energy-efficient, so optical computation is a technology that utilizes interactions of photons rather than electrons. So right now we're on electrons to process computation. Optical POW, envisioned by Michael Dabrowski, is a POW function optimized for optical machines. The low energy consumption would render OPOW extremely cap heavy and would thus be ideal for Casper following above reasoning. So I believe Yonatan is talking about looking into optical POW for Casper as it's very CapEx heavy and that would secure the network more because there'd be a higher barrier to entry and there would be lower energy consumption. So it says here, the current power functions of Casper K heavy hash is already friendly to optical ASICs and of course computable by CPUs, GPUs and regular ASICs too. This function can probably be further optimized, more R&D is needed. For the original OPOW paper see here, so when we click on OPOW there's just a little bit about it. It just talks about most cryptocurrencies relying on proof of work and then it talks about however there is a cost in concentrated in hardware which is capital expenditure, CapEx what they're talking about, rather than electricity which is operating expenses, so OPEX. The rapid growth and improvement in silicon photonics over the last two decades had led to the commercialization of silicon photo photonic co-processors. And then for low energy deep learning, OPOW is optimized for this technology such that miners are incentivized to use specialized energy efficient photonics for computation. Beyond providing energy savings, OPOW has the potential to improve network scalability, enable decentralized mining outside of low electricity cost areas, and democratize issuance. Due to the capex dominance of mining costs, OPOW hash rate will be significantly less sensitive to underlying coin price declines. So what they're talking about is removing the energy cost, which is the OPEX, and basically making the network only successful on CapEx. So they want more people to spend a lot of money on these machines because it's a higher barrier to entry instead of just the electric costs. So they're trying to eliminate electric costs basically to get them down to the lowest that they can. And the only barrier of entry then would be the spending on these optical ASICs. OPOW is a decentralizing force. It levels the mining field by centering competition around capital, so money, rather than energy. The former being order of magnitude easier to transport, convert, and distribute. 
So obviously money is easier to transport, convert and distribute. And you don't have to worry about changing in energy prices as well, because all you'd need to do is spend the money on these machines and the energy wouldn't really make a difference what price it came at. Aside from geographical decentralization, the low carbon signature additionally allows for stealth mining operations, the existence of which is essential for censorship resistance. So they're talking about how, you know, you can kind of tell where a mining facility is if you just basically looked at the grid and saw where the power was being drawn from. You could see a large amount of power being drawn to that place and you could basically say, oh, that's a mining facility. If you wanted to find one, say the government wanted to look for mining facilities around the country, they could look for places that have abnormally high energy expenditure. And then he goes on to say optical ASICs will not enter the game in the short to mid term. Pace depends on R&D efforts and funding, which is fortunately above their pay grade and obviously have no dog in the fight. Nevertheless, it's important to recollect and reaffirm the original vision we had when choosing Casper's K-heavy hash and to ensure community alignment around this. Changes to the current version of K-heavy hash are probably necessary in order to optimize for OPAL, ideally parameter adjustments only, with reasonable heads up to the mining community. Governance of such changes is to be decided and will depend on whether or how we can avoid centralization on the manufacturing end. This way or another, optical tech initiatives should be first citizens in Casper's colony and they are vital for P2P electronic cash systems to scale up while maintaining Satoshi's principles. Efficient security budget, geographical decentralization, political feasibility. TLDR, Casper operates at the speed of light. So he said that they might be optimizing K-heavy hash for OPOWs when they come online. Obviously, they don't have any optical ASICs right now on the network. They don't believe. I mean, Bitcoin would probably be the first ones to get them. And in this paper, they actually talk about how it'd be very easy for any proof of work cryptocurrency to cater towards optical proof of work. So it probably won't be that hard for them to actually change over. So that's it for the video guys, if you did enjoy or if you didn't understand anything then please leave a comment below and I'll try answer them. If this video helped, please like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.